Hey guys, welcome into a good old fashioned Sephora and JCPenney haul. Am I currently going through a foundation declutter? Have I done many declutters recently? Yes, did I need more makeup? Absolutely not. I've taken a couple of trips in store recently. So I've got my three little Sephora bags here. I wanna do a haul, but I also wanna do a try on. So that's why we're starting with a bare face. It is an excruciatingly hot and humid day. I was outside for all of 10 minutes and it was literally sweating down my face. So we're gonna sit here. We're gonna try on some makeup, some new makeup, some new to me makeup and stay in front of this fan. So let's get into it. Okay, so when I was walking through the mall, I went through the JCPenney store to get to the Sephora store inside of the mall. And it was really interesting to see the brands that were inside of JCPenney. And it almost looks like an Ulta. I don't know if you guys have seen them but they have some really interesting stuff in there so it's like they sell cover girl but they also sell lunar beauty and i was like okay lunar beauty and then they have a full stock of rms products which you may or may not know rms is now out of sephora so none of their new releases are there i think they still have some items on their website but the new blushes that launched the new radiant spf wasn't on the sephora site so as far as i know rms is completely coming out of sephora but their full stock was there at the jc penny like stand they also have full wander beauty i know that sephora carries this on their website but i never see it in stores they don't even have like a little section dedicated to it just a ton of different brands dose of colors was in there when i was asking the guy i was like okay, so why did it end with Sephora? And he said, well, they had been trying to get out of their contract with Sephora for a while because they wanted to team up with brands themselves. And as you may know, Lunar Beauty used to be in Sephora for a hot minute, but now they are being sold inside of JCPenney. So I thought that was interesting. And one of the brands that they had there was called Mineral Fusion. So everything that they sell is a dupe of some high end thing. So I'm pretty sure this is like a dupe of a Charlotte Tilbury quad and everything was very clean and they weren't out of stock in anything. So that was really nice and it was quite big. I mean, they took up the same real estate of what Sephora was using and put a bunch of makeup in there. So yeah, I thought this looked really good and I swatched this shimmer shade and it looked delightful. And this also says it's a refillable component. Oh, look at that. You can pop these out. I want to say this wasn't like super inexpensive. It was a pretty expensive quad, but I was like, who sells Mineral Fusion? And it appears they are their own brand. They're hypoallergenic, vegan, cruelty-free, gluten-free. I cannot find where they're made, like where this product was made. Let's just swatch a couple of these shades because they just looked really good. There really is only one matte in here. So I don't know if I'm gonna like love the matte because it's like a purpley shade. Well, these two are really nice. This was the one I swatched in stores. It's just like, well, let me turn on this light. I don't know if that helps. It's like really glittery. It doesn't have a whole lot of base pigment, but it was really pretty. Let's just swatch this matte shade for fun. And it looks pretty good, nice and pigmented. Don't know if it'll be like a patchy purple matte shade, but anyway, I just thought I would try that. But everything on their display was literally a dupe of something. Just dupe, 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 dupe. So let, that's basically what they're doing in their brand. I really didn't see like any unique product. So I'm interested to try this, but the reason that I don't wanna try this one on today is because I picked up some new Merit cream shadow. So we're gonna try that on. So I wanna start off showing you guys the stuff that I'm not gonna put on today. And then we'll get into the stuff that we are going to put on. Like I told you, it's a combination between new releases and then I re-upped on one item and then just some like new to me makeup. So I got the Lunar Beauty Lip Gloss. I have, I think at least one left. I think I've had two in my collection at different times, but this one looked delightful. It's just this light pink with sparkles. Oh my gosh, his glosses are so, they're like basically like lip oils. This one is just basically a sheer wash of color. With sparkles in it it looks really really pretty so i'm excited to add that to my collection i picked up a bunch of rose ink products and i feel like i'm going to exclude them in today's video because they launched a new foundation that i'm teetering on getting i'm not sure yet but if i do then i want to do like a full review of rose ink products so i want to hold on to testing them for the first time on camera but i picked up one of their blushes which were really popular i want to say like a year two years ago blush divine radiant lip and cheek color and i got mine in the shade camella sorry camellia which i think is just like a mauvey shade i already have their bronzer in my collection it is the only thing that i have from the brand here is this one i might as well just 
give it a good old swatch. This is more of like a buildable formula, or at least it feels that way. It definitely has that like really dewy, radiant finish. So I'm gonna hold onto this one so I can do that full face of Rose Ink product. And then I picked up the Soft Light Hydrating Concealer. Man, the shades were odd. I hear Rose Ink has like really good concealer shade, and a lot of people really like that, and it's one of the few concealers that works for them. But I was having such a hard time like color matching myself in the stores. This one, I don't know what the undertones were, but it looked like the best match for me or the only one that would like really work, even though it's kind of like on the paler side. And then I got one of their Satin and Shimmer Duet eyeshadows. I didn't even know they made this. And this just looked really good. Another toilet seat. Doesn't it look just divine? I believe both of these are cream shadows. This one for sure. But I wanna say this one right here is powder. Ooh, my goodness gracious. Look at this. That was super duper creamy. Isn't that like a really beautiful duo? This was my favorite one in store. Some of them just weren't appealing, but this one looked good. Undertone of this shade just looks like really delightful. Then I picked up one of my favorite mascaras. I just put it in a Beauty Empties, and this is the Lawless, the one and done volumizing mascara. You want pigmented volumizing lashes. This is a mascara to try. I hear literally no one talking about it, and it has been my holy grail for years. I wanna say three years at this point. I have repurchased this. I keep saying four times, but it could be more than that. And then I was like, do I get it? Do I not get it? I mean, I have so many mascaras in my collection and several that I'm really loving, but I always like to have this in my collection. So I picked up another backup of it. I also got, and I feel like this was kind of a new release. This one was from Sephora. This is the Targeted Anti-Aging Serum. Sephora seems to be coming out with more skincare these days and i know they had a bunch of new launches in the skincare department and i was gonna pick up their vitamin c because it's pretty affordable some vitamin c's can be very very expensive but i just picked up one recently so i did not oh, it's like a very milky texture so i didn't want to pick up another so i'm testing out the sephora skincare brand we'll see how it goes and then at the wander beauty stand back at jc i'm jumping all over the place here i got one of their double date lip and cheek duos every single thing that i've ever tried from them has been really good but i've never like intentionally purchased a wander beauty product and i just feel like they're kind of underrated like they have some really really good stuff their shimmer formula and their eyeshadows is really delightful. This packaging is so cute. I've never even heard of people talking about that. There's the cream blush and then the bottom is like this balm, which is like kind of like a highlighter, just like this dewy kind of finish product that you could use lips or cheeks. Look how pigmented that is. Wonder Beauty, I'm telling you, just has really nice products and I feel like they're a totally underrated brand overall. I didn't need more cream blushes in my collection, but... <laughs> and then they had the Double Date Eyeshadow Duo, which again looked really good. And I'm telling you guys, their shimmer formula is super underrated. Their shadow formula, even in the mattes, is super underrated. Like nobody talks about those. I swear I'm gonna get to putting on makeup here shortly. I had a pretty large haul. And I feel like their packaging is really, really cute too. And here's the little duo. So at the top is a shimmer. I'm hoping that this is one of their like normal formulas. And the bottom is a cream. But the duo looks so delightful. Like the, these shades look so good. Oh my gosh. This is really pigmented and really creamy. You guys, look at that. It's basically like a Charlotte Tilbury. Eyes to mesmerize. It is the same, same eyeshadow shimmer formula. You guys, if you have not tried Wander Beauty shimmer formula, you really should. It's incredibly silky. It's usually incredibly light reflecting. It's so soft and gorgeous on the eyes. This one looks like tone wise and quality. I'm just gonna absolutely love it. And then I picked up some more false lashes in Flirty from the Sephora collection. I really do like the Sephora lashes. I'll cut these down a little bit, but the length seems like pretty good if I'm doing a dramatic eye look. And then in one of my orders, cause one of these orders was same day delivery, Moroccan oil scent like shower gel and body lotion, which I'm totally down to try this for sure. And that's everything that I'm not gonna put on my face. So let's get into what I am gonna put on my face. I'm gonna start with a primer. If you guys are returning viewers on my channel, you know how much I've been talking about how oily my skin is lately, but I haven't really tried a lot of mattifying primers, not necessarily the ones that are super popular. So I picked one up from Milk. 
I even think I got one from one size that's on its way. So many foundations are just not lasting very, very long for me and I don't want that. So what do they call this? The Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. This one was just a mini. I wanna try a more mattifying primer and get actual results from it. Because all the mattifying primers that I have ever tried, I have never really had good results. Okay, this is a really strong scent right away. What is that smell? What is that smell? Oh my goodness. It says it's a lightweight 90% natural water cream primer. Blurs, pores, and controls shines. It's infused with niacinamide, which makes sense. I can't tell what ingredients in here has this like really kind of strong, I want to say like eucalyptus scent. That's what it smells like. Something plant-based. You know what it smells like? It smells like sunscreen from the 90s. If that works, I'll definitely be talking about it in future videos. Okay, I just threw on some brows so we can go into the Merit eyeshadow. I picked up two of them. One was in studio and one was in social. I didn't like the packaging. I was able to like open these and swatch them. And I feel like the packaging is kind of cheap. It's a plastic component, but like this doesn't, like you have to, it doesn't stay completely. Like you really have to twist it like forcefully to get it to really stay. I, I just don't, I didn't love that. Like, don't forget to do this. See, look, it doesn't even go on. <laughs> In order to really make sure the shadow doesn't dry out, that was hard. That was unreasonably difficult. This one I feel like is a mauve shade in social that we could use as a base. These feel like a cream to powder formula. Yes, matte eye color. They dry really, really quickly. So look, you do not have a lot of time to work with these, but they're pretty no budge. Unreasonably difficult to open. This one is more like a, I wanna say like a taupe shade. Both of these are very, very beautiful. I feel like I'll put the taupe shade all over. This one maybe in the outer corner, and then I can pull in like this one, this shimmer right here. I also picked up their brush number two. I don't know why I don't usually do that. Once I tested the formula, I was kind of like, it dries pretty quickly. So I may need a more dense brush. Not that I don't have dense brushes, but this just looked really nice. So I picked this up, not a necessity. I'm gonna go into this one in the studio shade and kind of go like in the crease and maybe all over the lid. Wow, this is super duper easy and smooth. Whoo, these are nice probably one of my favorite cream matte formulas. Pretty much dried already. That's fast. That gives you just enough time to work. And this brush, not wrong, completely delightful. Work quickly because they dry really, really fast. See how it's kind of tugging on me already? I like that they have this pointed end on one side. So if you wanted to kind of like do detail work or even take one of the shades to do like a liner, I feel like that would work because it's really, really matte formula. What am I doing wrong? There it goes. I'm deepening up the outer corner with the shade Social now. They blend together really nicely, but yep, really fast. They dry really, really fast. All right, let's go into this mineral fusion and just take this one shimmer and put it all over the lid. That one is like mostly sparkles. There isn't a whole lot of base pigment to that one, but it's still like pretty and it's nice with like lighter shadows. No new foundation. So I'm going into the LYS. This one doesn't last me super long, but it's really beautiful smoothing coverage and I have used it in my 42 days of foundation recently and so, so beautiful on the skin. So I'm gonna throw this on really quickly and then we're gonna go into the concealer. Okay, now on into the concealer. This one is an LX010. I hear such good things about this concealer, you guys. I have been wanting to try it for a while. In fact, the only thing that I've tried from Rose Ink has ever been their bronzer. And it's such a cream to powder formula and it dried so quickly in my pot that I was kind of thrown off. I think this one's a little bit too light of a shade. It was so difficult in stores. I have to tell you, I hear people say like Rose Ink makes their perfect concealer match like with undertones. I hear that a lot. But when I was swatching every shade, I was like, oh my goodness, this nothing looks like it would match me. And they may have been out of stock in like the shade up from this one. And so like they had LX010 in stock. Look how bright that is. That's not, no, that's not usually as bright as I go. I usually try and match my 
foundation these days and it's like a stark white line we'll have to blend that in with some powder anyway the shade up that was available in stores was a huge jump Again, it might have been LX030 instead of 020, but none of them looked perfect for me. Okay, we do have a new release for powder. This is from Huda Beauty. This is the Easy Bake and Snatch Press Brightening and Setting Powder. So it is supposed to be brightening and it is supposed to be setting. I wanna stop for a minute and I wanna talk about the differences with this powder. They both retail for $38, but I don't think they're meant to be exactly the same. One is just in a pressed powder formula because her loose powder is actually for baking and setting, while this one claims to be for brightening and setting. They're both for setting, but I feel like their ancillary benefits do different things. So the loose powder is a lightly pigmented, silky setting powder that bakes and sets, blurs the look of fine lines, and locks in makeup for 10 hours with an airbrushed finish. I can tell you that the difference in the ingredients is that the loose powder has vitamin E, which is supposed to moisturize and strengthen the skin barrier for a smooth application. It has rice starch powder, which is supposed to absorb excess oil, and it has micronized powder, allows you to layer without caking. That one does have talc in it. This one doesn't appear to have talc. Its very first ingredient is actually mica and you see that one calls itself a brightening and then one calls itself a baking this is supposed to be a creamy hydrating non-comedogenic press powder designed for targeted brightening lifting and setting for medium coverage and a natural finish this actually sounds like more what i would wear i have mine in the shade cupcake which is described as fair to light skin tones with pink undertones to brighten and disguise under eye darkness so this is definitely good for an under eye for me the one that's more cherry in color is called Cherry Blossom. It's for fair to medium with true pink undertones. And that one is, I feel like, a more popular powder these days because it's just on the pink side. The loose powder, I just have a mini and I have this in Pound Cake. I kind of feel like this shade is the lighter version of Pound Cake because they have this in pound cake as well which says it's fair to light with golden undertones in pound cake but this one is for like pinky undertones which is probably more what i should be using anyway and i have so much more into pressed powder these days this has like a vent in the back it's very interesting like what are all those holes for this packaging is bizarre it looks like a tiny old hard drive doesn't it it looks like there's some serious magnets in here look even like the opening looks kind of strange. A little tiny powder puff at the bottom here, which is just one of your, feels like a silicone rubby pad, like like almost rubberish. It's not super soft. And then it flaps up and down, mirror in there. But I don't know what the benefit of like having this vent is, because it's definitely vented. It's bizarre, 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 bizarre. Let's use this little powder puff. It doesn't have like a finger holder. Hmm. Um, laying brightening powder kind of on top of a <laughs> a lighter concealer so that just really added more brightness to my under eye i hate this puff the puff is no good that puff just feels like sticky i don't know how to describe it otherwise all right something that i picked up that i've been wanting to try is the westman atelier bronzing stick this is the free sorry contour stick face trace contour stick they came out with the mini i do not believe this is the mini because it is the same size as my blush this one is in the shade biscuit it's pretty darn creamy, so I just want to draw it on. This is definitely a little bit of a faster drying formula than I thought it was going to be. Okay. This looks like a totally matte finish, but pretty easy to blend in. And for the shade, which is meant for fair to light skin tones, actually really nice. Not too deep, not too dark. A little bit of a reddish tone, it looks like, without being too warm. It's, it's nice. I don't know that it's blowing my mind. $46, but I've been wanting to get it, so I did. Okay, next for blush, I got one of the Merit Flush Balms. This is another one that had a lot of hype to it, and a lot of people have tried these except me. <laughs> so I caved when I got the eyeshadows and picked this up. I hear different things on this one. Like some people say, it's so good, I love it, but this is totally a balm, so there's not a whole lot of pigment to it. And I have heard some people say, this kind of just wears off of my skin after about, you know, three hours, it's totally gone. I feel like if you set it, you might get a little bit more, but it's still a balm though. So it's still gonna be much more 
lightly pigmented. It's kind of like a beautiful flush of color. We're getting a lot of blushes that are doing this thing lately, which is like buildable flush with sheen to it. The only ones that are blush balmy that I feel like are pretty long lasting, Urban Decay Hydromaniac Blush, beautiful sheen to it, probably the glowiest one of them, but it's a liquid instead of a cream. Am I building too much? I can't even tell anymore. And then the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Glows, pretty long lasting. This one, and I didn't tell you, I'm so sorry, is in the shade Beverly Hills. This is extremely, extremely lightweight. Not what I was expecting. When you look at these, you think they're gonna be much sturdier. All right, let me see if I can't set this down just a little bit. I mean, that defeats the purpose, but oh no, my brush is sticking. I don't know if this is my thing. I feel like this one is the most sticky balm that I have tried. Pat McGrath has balms. The Makeup by Mario ones are really balm-like. They're very juicy. The ones from Say also, I wanna say they're more metallic or golden and so they add a little bit of flush to the cheeks. They're not balm-like. These are true, true balms, super duper sticky. I don't necessarily know why these were so popular and when I've heard people talk about them, I've never heard them talk about like how balmy and dewy and sticky they are. I'm gonna go into the Lawless The One and Done Mascara. If you want something super pigmented that really makes your lashes like thicker, if they're really fine, that's a really nice mascara. I wanna say though, it's kind of a heavier weight formula. So if you don't like that, you probably wanna stay away from it. It doesn't bother me and it doesn't seem to like weighed my lashes down. I still find that they have like a decent curve to them. I don't know, I just really enjoy that mascara. Again, no one talks about it at all. We are on to the final two products and both of these are fairly new. I wanna say fairly, cause they may not still be like new new, but they're pretty darn new. So the Lip Bond and the Urban Decay, they had a really popular shade and they launched, I wanna say three different shades. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like it was their Backtalk shade that was really, really popular. So they came out with like, go Backtalk, love ya Backtalk. And one other thing, I actually really liked this formula and I had a shade that was orange. I bought it online. I didn't get to like swatch it in stores and I really disliked the way it looked on my lips. I don't know if I wanna leave this on, but I wanna try it. It's supposed to be intense full color payoff that won't crack or feather. Unrestrained wear, transfer smudge, and water resistant for the free, rebellious and fun. Instant shine and all day intensity. I don't know about the shine part. Like I know these to dry down. In fact, it's like already tacky. So I don't think these stay super shiny. So let's actually top it with the next one, which is the Juicy mm, Glass from Kaja. Again, not a brand brand new release, but fairly new. Look at their little packaging. How adorable is that? They have like a little bead at the top. I have mine in the shade 01 Rose Hip Spritz. As cute as it is good, it says. <laughs> That's cute. Like makes a ton of noise. Big doe foot applicator. Nice, juicy, juicy lip oil. Instant hydrating and plumping lip oil. Plumping, what? Okay, I didn't know it was plumping. <laughs> I can kind of feel the tingle, but not a whole lot. I don't think that that's gonna be a truly plumping formula. This lip combo, I like it. I like it a lot. Guess my favorite thing from today, probably these Merit <laughs> shadows. You know what is so funny? I legitimately was not going to get these. I was like, I don't need more cream shadows. Oh my gosh, Merit, not a brand that I've absolutely fallen in love with. I see people going goo goo gaga over them and I was like, no, I'm not getting them. I'm not, I'm not doing it, I'm not getting them. It is ironic that they happen to be, I feel like my favorite thing of today. Plus, I really enjoyed this little baby brush. If you're looking for a really simple matte shadow, I mean, I'm not gonna say that these are the cheapest, but I feel like they're really good quality. So that is it today, you guys. I wanna know what of this stuff that you have tried, what you've liked, what you've not liked. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, you guys. If you are not current subscribers, I would love to see you subscribe and stick around for today. I am out of here, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Bye, guys.